Hello, everybody. Let's see. Yes, yes. Good morning. Good morning. Today, we are on day 12 of our 30 day sunrise yoga challenge for beginners, unleashing the magic of yoga. And oh my gosh, I really hope that you put in the comments the transformations that are happening for you, or if you'll share them with me privately, I would love to find out what the benefits are that are taking place in your life. Um, a, a very easy way to know what those benefits are is to track them in your journal. Um, I'm not spelling a journal. There's not the, the journal, the journal outfit, the journal conglomerate is not hiring me to work for them. I just, I can't believe it. There's this amazing quote from this movie finish today, and it says, what is recorded grows. What is recorded and reported grows exponentially. And that's part of the reason why I want you to share what's happening for you. If you don't share it with me, share it with somebody because I can't even begin. I the transformations that are landing in my life that I didn't know were just there, just ready to come. I am flabbergasted, clearly. I'm literally flabbergasted. So enough of watching me go, oh, let's get into some yoga. Let's start with the grounding. And please... Um, excuse me, there will be a little bit of intermittent coughing. I'm going to do my best, but a cold is a cold, right? I do find that when I'm distracted, I'm less sick. <laughs> okay, let's ground ourselves. And what do we mean by grounding? We mean acknowledging the root chakra's contact with the ground with Mother Earth. And from that contact point, we can start to feel the other points of contact expanding, rooting as they expand. So every touch point, when it connects to the ground, it relaxes along the ground in the form of resting there letting the ground take the full weight of these things, of my, the back of my legs, of my hands and fingertips if they're touching the ground, of my back when it touches the ground. Let what you're doing be the thing instead of what you're doing, letting it be the thing to get you to the next thing. This is really important today because we're going to be grounding. and. We're going to be focusing on bone health. When you mix grounding and focusing on bone health, what do you have? Balancing on steroids. Yay! No, we're balancing. And we're going to be, um, the only way to balance is to have your base right first. And that's why I'm really emphasizing being really, really in touch with that moment of contact with the ground because it's going to give you, it's going to give you what you need today. Bring the hands to heart. Find your commitment. Let it pull through you, come out of you, swirl around you. One breath into the belly through the nose. Belly expands, exhale. Let's start with our five Tibetan rituals. Make sure the bolsters are close by. You may need them later. Let's do the five. Grounding into the feet, two feet beside each other, and fingertips are pointing down. Shoulder, shoulder, shoulders, cuffs are rooting into the sockets, pointing down and out. And bring your arms up to um, fully open, only as high as they need to go before the shoulders start to go like this. And I gotta make sure I've got enough room. Make sure you've got enough room to spin. Let's do it. One, 
Remember, the gaze is towards the ground. Two. Three. Four. Bring everything together, eyes closed, let the spin catch you. Mm. Camel. Two hands pointing towards the ground. Two elbows pointing towards each other, trying to reach each other. That's going to give you the security you need for your shoulders and your limbs and your arms, your um, joints in the arms, elbows, wrists, all of that. Even that um, protective hand positioning, you can use that on your butt right now. Okay, inhale. Exhale. <laughs> inhale. Exhale. And remember to practice where you are. You know where you need to be. We've done this a lot of days. Inhale. Exhale. And five. Even going with today's uh, lesson, which is dedicated to balance, if I don't push into the tops of my feet, when I go back, I will fall over. Because when you have a proper base, then you don't wobble everywhere. Even in something like camel, which has so much contact with the ground. Let's now move to J. Inhale. Two. Three. Four. Five. Tabletop. <laughs> Inhale. And our last of the five, our fifth of the five, upward facing dog to downward facing dog, protective grip with the hands. And this time I'm going to do the, the full version, the challenge version. So inhale. And five. My breathing is a bit stilted, as you can imagine, because of my cold. But ideally, you want the breath to go. Inhale. You want that moment of silence that Anagata, that's at the end of the om, um, that moment, you want it not to last too long. So it doesn't want to sound like you're holding your breath, like, because <clears throat> that's going to shock your system. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's get into the poses. Our first pose is tree pose. We know this pose very well. And we want to think about bone health is the result of forcing our bones, giving them their exercise um, to hold weight. The more that something is in use, the more, um, the stronger it is. When something's out of use, then it starts to degenerate. And the, we see this um, with my dog. He has um, teeth and he has to keep his teeth healthy. So they have rawhide bones and different chew toys so that their teeth and gums 
are continued to work because what happens, the blood flows to those places. The blood brings nutrients to those places. The body says, oh, this needs attention. This needs nutrients to keep going. I'm going to keep feeding the, this thing, these, this gum, this mouth. And our bones need that same attention. If we don't balance, if we're not balancing on our head, on our shoulders, on our arms, on our elbows, on our feet, on our heels, if we're not on our butt, if we're not balancing on them, then they're not, they're not going to get as much help as they might need, kind of like the squeaky wheel. So today we're going to really think about the gift we're giving our bones when we balance by nourishing them. And the first point is to actually do the exercise. So we're going to start with tree. We're going to ground into the ground, two feet are side by side. We're going to start with the left foot supporting and the right foot doing the movement. The supporting side is more important than the moving side. All of your focus needs to go on that supporting leg. And we're going to pick up the mantra, I have arrived, I am home. That is the mantra from Thich Nhat Hanh. And if you go to any of his retreats, any of his Plum Village, his Plum Village is in France, but any of his retreats, I went to Deer Park in California, you'll see it written everywhere. I have arrived, I am home. We are home and we have arrived in every moment. It's just that a lot of times we spend trying to run from them. Today, as we go into these poses, let the choice to start be enough for the pose. Because the more you can arrive and be home in that moment, the more you can root, the more your base can expand, no matter how small or large it is. And the sturdier you are to build on that base. Okay, so we're going to kickstand our right foot against our left ankle. I've arrived, I'm home. I'm gonna let my hands rest on either side of my body. I've arrived, I'm home. I'm going to push into my left foot. As I push, as I bring my right foot right above my ankle and right below my knee, embracing my calf muscle. I have arrived. I am home. For many of us, this is where we stop today. For some of us, we might take it a little higher. We'll bring the leg up and you can even help yourself. Make sure to push down into that left foot. You can help yourself by placing the foot over that knee. What you will never do is place the foot on the knee. That is not a place to place the foot for this pose. You're going to squeeze with your left inner thigh and your right foot, palm of the foot. They're going to squeeze together in a beautiful kiss. That's your balance point. The force that they have pushing against each other is going to create your point of balance. I have arrived. I am home. You're welcome to stay here. We can't ever have our foot pushing against our knee because the knee isn't going to be able to give that force back that the calf muscle and the inner thigh can give. It would just, you would just be hurting the joint. That's why we don't balance with our foot at the knee. One more place to take this is to put it pushing into the left foot, is to put that right foot in your hip flexor pocket. And you can hold it there, letting the right knee point down towards the ground. You can hold that left, that right foot with your left hand. You can tuck it into the pocket and see if it wants to stay. If you have slippery pants, it's a little harder for it to stay. And you can hold here. I've arrived. With the arms, you can take them to prayer. You can take them, you can grow your tree. On your way to growing a tree, you can have your arms just above your head in prayer. You can grow your tree, pushing through the fingertips, pushing through the back palms of the hands. You can leave your hands to the side. You can bring your gaze up towards the sky if you're feeling it. I can't go all the way up. And you can close your eyes if you want to bring the full challenge of the pose. And now let's unpack everything. So if your hands are up in the tree, I mean, did, if you grew your tree, your branches. You're going to bring your hands to prayer overhead. You're going to bring 
your hands through prayer to your heart and bring your hands down to either side of your body. You're going to gently take your right foot with your left hand if you had it there. You'll first place it where the palm of the foot and the inner thigh kiss. Then you'll let the right foot work its way down to give reverence to the calf. So that place along the way. And as we meet up with you at the different stopping points where you were, kickstand, we'll all join together back to two feet on the ground. Let's take the other side, pushing into the right foot. I've arrived, I'm home. Kickstand, the left foot against the right ankle. I've arrived, I'm home. That base, that contact with the ground makes this ankle this joint, a safe point of contact for that left foot, that it can push against it. Letting the left foot glide up the leg, hugging the calf muscle. The calf muscle and of the right foot pushes into the ground. I have arrived. I am home. Think about that right foot. That is your point of contact with the ground, your sole point of contact. Is it rooting? Is it expanding? Is it relaxing and resting? Bringing the left foot above the knee, if that's where your balance is today. It's okay, you've been in the pose ever since you decided to do it. Okay, I've arrived. I'm home. Mm. And for those of you who would like to, Let's grab the left foot with the right hand, letting the left knee point towards the ground. That's the goal, but stop where you are along the way. I've arrived, I'm home. For the focus, it's really helpful. Um, this is one of the things about teaching a class is that when you're teaching, you're looking around at the students and so they're like looking around too and, you actually want to focus on a point of stillness that is either on the ground, but some people fall when they focus on the ground. So you can also focus on something that is directly across from your eyes. But focus on that still point. Bring the hands where you wish. They're probably already there. I can't seem to be able to let my left foot rest in the hip flexor pocket. So I'm just going to do a half, half prayer. Have overhead prayer, growing my tree. Mm -hmm. Day is coming up. And then building down through each place, intentionally giving each point of reference its time. Coming to foot kissing inner thigh, foot kissing calf, and two feet side by side. Lovely. Our next balancing pose. Yes. Oh, I've got to mention that. Mm -hmm. um, so you might feel like, okay, my muscles were working a lot, but how is this going to get to my bones? As you get stronger, your muscles will need to do less work. And when they're doing less work, then they need less attention. And then the body can start to adjust itself in a, in a deeper way. So for example, if your castle is under attack and, um, and uh, you gotta fight them off, then everybody's gonna be in the castle and they're gonna be huddled and scared and the soldiers are gonna be fighting. And then as you ward off the enemy, then the soldiers are gonna go farther and farther from the castle. So the castle initially are the muscles doing all the work. And then as the soldiers get farther away, then the villagers start to come out and they're in their village and they feel safe. And so a life can start to happen there. And then as the soldiers push the enemy farther and farther out, then um, more people will expand and they'll have little, you know, 
fincas all over, like outside of the village. And then as it expands, then, you know, more things can get more attention, the safer and stronger something is. And this is the same thing for, um, for the body. If the muscles are strong, then it doesn't, you don't need to keep reinforcing the muscles. Then the work goes to the bones. Then the work goes to the veins. Then the work goes to slow and, and having, um, and keeping the chakras clear. You know, it's, it's a triage. So that's why we have to practice consistently. The consistency doesn't have to be every day, but when we practice consistently, then the things that need attention, the subtle things will eventually get that attention. That's bone health. Okay, so we're now going to take eagle pose. <coughs> For eagle pose, we're going to start with uh, this time, we'll do left foot again. So you're going to bring two feet down, two hands down towards the ground, which means you've got to bend the legs and you're going to just come to, you know, should we do it from chair? No, we're not going to do it from chair. We're just going to do it from a bent leg. So you're going to bend both feet and you're going to just kick up the right foot into the air. So already the pose has started. I have arrived. I am home. We're going to bring the right thigh across the left thigh. And we're going to sit a little lower as we would in chair. I've arrived. I'm home. We're going to let that right foot bend backwards. That right heel comes towards our back wall. I've arrived. I'm home. This is the pose for the legs. You're welcome to stay here. The pose for the arms. Our right arm is going to come out, making an upside down L, a right side up L. Our left elbow, oh no, 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 no. Let me see, uh, yeah. Are we gonna wrap around with that? No, our right arm needs to be on the bottom. So we're gonna make an elbow with the left and we're going to, the more you bend, the sturdier your pose is. You're gonna bring that right arm under and now you've got two elbows stacked on top of each other with the right arm holding the left arm, but they're both pushing uh, so that the shoulders stay square and down. From here, you can wrap the wrists around each other so that the right wrist is wrapped around the left forearm. And you can wrap the right ankle around the left shin, the left calf muscle. And now you're in eagle pose. Let's take three breaths here. Inhale. Exhale, thinking about bone health. Inhale, exhale. I have arrived, inhale. I am home, exhale. Unraveling everything at the same time and bringing everything to Tadasana Mountain. Let's take the other side. Pushing into the right foot, kick up the left foot into the air, bending the right foot, almost like chair pose, except, well, you could even bring the seat even back to get that balance. This is the pose. I've arrived. I'm home. Bringing the left thigh over the right thigh. I've arrived. I'm home. Letting those knees come together like cow face pose. I've arrived. I am home. Bring the left arm under and the right arm across. The two elbows meet. I've arrived. I am home. This is the pose. From here, you're welcome to take that twist. That final twist in the legs with the left foot hooking around that right, um, that right calf muscle and the left hand hooking around that right wrist. I'm a little wiggly on this side. I've arrived. I am home. thinking about that base. Inhale. I've arrived. Exhale. I am home. Inhale, I have arrived. Exhale, I'm home. 
make sure that you're trying to focus all of your crosses, your elbows, your knees, towards the center of the body. Don't let them twist away. That's going to let the balance happen. I've arrived. Inhale. I am home. Exhale. And unravel. Gently. Intentionally. No stress to get into the pose. No stress to get out of the pose. Because of my mosquito interruption, the lesson live is going to go a little bit longer than it usually, than the 30 minutes. But when I edit, it will be shorter. Okay, now we're going to do the third pose. Oh, let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. So when you're an eagle, people want to go like this and they twist themselves around because they're twisting. And actually, it's the, it's the resistance to twisting that gives you the balance. So if you think about the elbows and the knees being at the center, not twisting around from each other, then that action, that tension actually creates the balance in the pose. Okay, our final pose is half moon pose. We've done this pose already. We did it a few days ago. So let's go right into it. For half moon, I'd usually have you do, you know, you know, you'd have to do upward facing dog, Uttanasana, Urdhva Uttanasana, Uttanasana, jump back Chaturanga, bring the right leg through, bring it, bring the knee through, come to warrior two. And then from here, you go into half moon. And so first let's get into warrior two. You know how to get there. Your warrior two can be short or long. Feel this pose. It's really helpful to build into half moon. There are other ways to get into half moon, but this is the way I like to do it. So we've got that right angle here. Yeah. Okay. Breathe here. Just one breath. Inhale. Exhale. And now we're going to put our left hand on our hip. We're going to bring our right hand to the ground or to a bolster. So you can also do take something like the pillows or as I demonstrated in the other video, you can use something behind you, but don't, I don't want you to get used to working backwards. So that's only temporary. A block is going to be more helpful. A stack of books is going to be more helpful. And you're just going to take contact with your, with the ground or your block. And you're going to push with that back foot, push up, tap, tap. That's what I like to show is tap, 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 up. And launch that left leg into the air. Pushing your points of contact with the earth are the right foot and the fingers of your hand or the palm of your hand on the ground. Your leg doesn't have to be high. Your leg can be touching the ground, your left leg. It can be at a 30 degree angle, 45, 60, 90. You can even open it more if you'd like, but today we're gonna to focus on hanging out at 90. Hand is on the hip. I once had a teacher who explained that the points of contact, you ground in those and you preserve the space between. That space between is um, thinking of it as, as a fluid in itself, as something that you're, leaning against and the more you push into those points of contact with the ground the more you are preserving that in-between space um it's just another way to think about balancing the hips may want to if you can see me on the screen the hips may want to turn down that's for warrior three or airplane we want our hips to actually look at the our hip bones to look at the long side of the mat. You can bring the hand up, the left hand up towards the sky. And if you don't need that right hand on the ground, you can bring the right hand to the heart. And there are further places to take it, but that's not where we're going to go. Not today. One more inhale here. Inhale. Exhale. And Unbuilding, rebuilding, building back to warrior two, the same way that you arrived. 
and coming all together to Tadasana. Mm -hmm. Let's take the other side. Warrior two. Feeling those points of contact, that is balance. Grounding through those feet, inhale. Exhale. Right hand comes on the hip. Left hand comes with comes to contact with the ground. Tap, tap up, or, and you can take a look at the screen, you can also push into the left foot so much and push back with the right foot, pushing away from the mat with the right foot so hard that you launch. Oh, that was a little, that was, that was a failure to launch. <laughs> so you're in warrior two. And you can actually push and push against the ground and launch that right foot into the sky. Um, but you just have to push really hard, push against the ground with your right foot and push into the ground with your supporting foot. And here again, we're gonna wanna turn our hips down. We want to keep them rotated out. We'll have point of contact with the ground, with our fingertips, with the palm of the hand on the ground in that active protective grip or on a block. Hand can be on the hip, hand can reach towards the sky. If you find yourself struggling with balance, you can also put a little bend in the leg. That's going to give you more stability and it's gonna keep the blood flowing through the supporting leg. You don't wanna lock the leg. One more inhale here. Inhale. Reach, push, stretch through this balancing pose. Exhale. And bring your, with integrity, without rushing to get out of the pose, come back to where you started building back to where you started just as thoughtfully as you built into the pose and coming, bringing everything together to dasana. Okay. So we just did three poses that are dedicated to balance, that are dedicated to bone health. And this is just the beginning. As you practice, you will start to feel the subtle cues that the body gives you saying, I wanna turn this way. I wanna overcorrect. I wanna slump my shoulders. I'm angry. I remember this thing that happened a long time ago. I wanna deal with this stuff. That's another beautiful thing that comes because remember we're aggravating this, these latent memories and we're helping bring them up. If you experienced any resistance today, Explore it because it's coming up to be released. And the less baggage we're carrying mentally, physically, intuitive, spiritually, emotionally, the more present in the world we can be and the more brightly our light can shine. Thank you so much for joining me today on this 12th day of your 30 day challenge. I'm wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. Namaste.